Hi guys! Today I'm going to talk to you about marriage. If you're married, please listen to this. I'm going to tell you five ways to make your marriage work. And I'm going to share my own personal experience with you guys today because what would this be without me actually having some kind of experience with it? Today I'm going to share with you the best choice you can make for your marriage and I wrote a song about it too. I'm going to tell you five ways you can make your marriage work. The five C's. C for Camille. <laughs> Number one, commitment. For better or for worse, you married one another. You love each other. In the beginning of your marriage, everything was perfect. And then? And then happened. The for better, for worse. The for better part is the easy part. The true test is in the for worse part. Everyone has those days. No marriage is perfect. You've heard it before. With your commitment to one another, you want to be intentional. What does being intentional mean when you're committed to a person, to your partner, to your spouse? A big part of it is guarding your heart protecting your heart, which is where your love, your soul tie is with this person. Make it a point to commit to them. And in commitment, there's time. You gotta make time for the things that you're committed to. Just like your job, you punch in every single day, you go into work, you clock in, you're committed to your job. Same thing. And in many ways, in many respects, I've learned over the years that the marriage relationship is like kind of like a partnership. Day to day, the tasks, the things you have to do with children, with a family, there's so much to do. It's like a business agreement almost in a way. Yes, there's the lovey-dovey, beautiful love-making part of things, but in the marriage commitment part of things, there's so much work to be done. You wanna be responsible to one another financially. To create a safe environment in your home for yourself, your partner, and your kids, you wanna clean home, all the things, the long list of things that have to be done. You want to have good, healthy meals. You want to make sure that everybody's healthy, taking care of one another, going to see your doctor. So anyway, commitment, committing to the person. Number two, C, compromise. Compromise means you're meeting in the middle. And yes, we all have our bad days where our ego can be a little bit more puffed up than it needs to be selfish, self-centered. We all in some way struggle with that. We want our needs to be met. Our feelings were hurt. Sticking to your word, being honest to one another, looking at each other in the eyes and saying, you know what, I messed up. In order to make a marriage relationship work, you've got to compromise and meet in the middle. Both sides have needs. Something important with compromise. I love the idea of the love languages. Everybody loves in a certain way and everybody receives love in a certain way. The five love languages are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. It's hard to remember them sometimes, but I know my personal love language is touch and affirmations. My partner, my husband, his love language is time, quality time. And we all need that quality time. Maybe you've been married for a long time and you just don't know what their love language is or you've never taken the time to consider that. Does my patient, does my patient. <laughs> does my partner like gifts? Or maybe they like the love language of time. They don't want gifts, they just want your time and attention, a listening ear, listening to one another. Compromise, putting everything else, all the chatter in your mind aside intentionally for that moment and listening to them. I think time is one of the greatest gifts you can give to someone that you love. This is a great way to meet in the middle in your relationship is find out how is it that you express love, how is it that you wanna be loved, and how is it that your partner wants to be loved. C number three, communication. Get off of your phones and talk to one another. Every single day right now we struggle, we battle with, I think everyone does, kids, adults, no matter who you are, the struggle of screen time. The way it can just suck you in. Another reason to have your day structured a time set aside for the screen, a time set aside for your kids, a time set aside for yourself too, for your sanity, and a time set aside for your partner, for the one you love, your man or your woman. Look at each other in the eye. I'm a mom of two kids and it gets pretty hectic sometimes. Some of you have three, four, five, six kids. I can't even imagine, whoo! It's hard to make time for your partner when you have a family 
and week by week you're just trying to make it schools in session or some of your homeschooling right now especially right now in the middle of a pandemic it is so hard and stressful for some homes the issues that were already there are just blowing up in your face people with families the best time to be able to communicate you can check in with one another throughout the day, but the best way to be able to communicate is at the end of the day, when the kids are in bed, work is done, dinner's done, you've brushed your teeth, you're winding down, kids are in bed, quiet time. For many of us, that quiet time, we just want to be left alone. But this is a good time for you and your spouse and your loved one to spend that time together, read together, do something that you guys like. Watching a movie together, <sighs> I wouldn't recommend it every single day, but for the most part, I think looking at each other in the eyes or into your hearts, into your soul and mind, looking at one another and listening to one another, being emotionally, physically, and spiritually available to one another. That is one part that we struggled with, my husband and I. We were spiritually and emotionally unavailable in one part of our marriage, but I'll tell you more about that later. C number four, cuddles. Kissing, love, intimacy. You don't want to do it when you're mad at each other, right? Who wants to hug and kiss and be friendly and happy when you're mad at each other? And I get it, totally normal. That is why the sea of communication has got to be there. I hurt your feelings. What did I do wrong? But you hurt my feelings and my feelings are important too. It's not just about your feelings. Compromise, communication. Men aren't big talkers in general. Women are the ones who connect with the communication and that's part of the meeting in the middle. So in order for cuddles to happen, there has to be some communication, some wrongs made right, and a forgiving heart, ego set aside for cuddles to happen. That's why all those have to happen. But the cuddles are so important. The kissing, the loving, the love making, the eye contact make time for one another in that respect. And C number five, the most important one I will tell you is, for the two of you, come to Jesus. Choosing Jesus, choosing Christ, choosing God to be the center of your marriage. Why? Because we're faulty. All of us are faulty in some kind of way and we cannot do this on our own. Go to the one who created love. Go to the one who is love in the definition of itself. Every day make time for God together. A couple that prays together stays together. You've heard that many times, but it's so true. My faith is what carries me through every single day without my connection with God. Me personally, my sanity, my groundedness, my being able to make it through every single day, I have to connect to my creator. And in order for my marriage to work, in order for my home to be at peace, in order for my kids to be happy and know that they're safe, I've got to connect to that higher power. Every day make time for God together. And that is where we went wrong. That is where my husband and I struggled a few years ago. We were not making time for God, making him the center of our marriage. And we became spiritually and emotionally unavailable to one another to the point where I I felt lost in the marriage and someone else came into the picture and I did not protect my heart. I messed up, but we both sought the help of the Lord in our situation. We both sought counseling and through that counseling, there was commitment, there was compromise, there was communication to be had, cuddles, and we came to Jesus with all of our pain, with all of our disconnect, our emotional and spiritual unavailability was brought together in that moment. Every day we have committed, and since then we have done it, just about every day, some days it can happen, but every day we commit at least five to 10 minutes, especially during the week. Weekends are a little bit easier. During the week, five to 10 minutes every day to spend time in devotion to God together, reading his word which we believe has extra special power and a devotional. And being intentional in that time. God knows the desires of our heart and he brought you two together for a reason. His word says that all we have to do is ask. And by coming to Jesus, we're seeking the help of the great counselor. What better counselor than God himself 
to help heal and mend whatever wounds, whatever wrongs you may have with your partner. The book of Psalms, specifically Psalms 37 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He knows your heart, he knows your needs, but you have to come to him. If we get stuck in here, it's not gonna work. We have to open that door and allow him to show us and lead us and fill those needs deep in our heart. I almost forgot about the song. So the song I wrote, I'm gonna link it below, and it's called I Choose You. And when I started this, I was saying the best choice you can make and the best choice in your marriage is to choose the Lord first and foremost. And then everything else will fall into place after that. I wrote this song when I was in the middle of the struggle. I felt lost, I felt confused. I didn't know what to do. And so I poured my heart out in this song and I'd love for you to listen to it. It's called, I Choose You. And in that moment, in the midst of all the confusion, all the feelings, all the emotions, I chose God over myself, over my marriage. I chose him. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless your marriage. God bless your families. Until we meet again.